Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to worship tonight. I'm Pastor Maggie. Welcome to all of you who are here and those of you watching online. Our Lenten theme this year is Created for Community. And every Wednesday so far, we have dwelled in a different aspect of what it means to be in community. Tonight is our last Wednesday Lenten service, and our focus is on being in community with Christ. I invite you all to settle in, to allow yourself a chance to breathe, and to center yourself with our Creator and with one another by hearing these words from Psalm 130. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Amen. Let us read our opening dialogue responsively. Behold, unveiled the vesper skies, the evening has begun. How blessed are you, all loving God, who weaves both day and night. The starry mantle for our robe, the shadow and the light. Stay with us, Christ, our rest prepare as labor ebbs with night. And holy dreams open with prayer, till the dawn of the God desires truth in our inward being, receiving us as we are, broken and flawed. Seeking God's mercy, let us confess our sins before God. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your abundant life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive this good news. God turns to you in love. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Let us sing our opening hymn, All Praise to Thee, My God, This Night, number 565.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. And they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and deliver him to the Gentiles, and they will mock him, and spit upon him, and scourge him, and kill him, and after three days he will rise. And James and John, the son of Zebedee, came forward to him and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism of which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but is for those whom it has been prepared. And when the ten had heard it, they began to be indignant of James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are supposed to rule over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man also came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life for, as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and children can come forward. Good evening. good evening. You guys did such a good job this year sitting up front together. Did you have fun? Yeah. yeah. I like it when you say the Lord's Prayer. That's for, You guys do a really good job with that. Do you practice at home? No. <laughs> you just learned it here in Sunday school? And when we say it in church, that's excellent. So the Lord's Prayer is one thing that we learn from Jesus. And when we say it, we're taken into Jesus' community. And that's something that we can say. But are there some things that you guys can think of that we do in church that we can see with our eyes or hear with our ears? I have this here. Do you see what this is? What is it? Can you tell them? Henry? A seashell. Yes, I have a seashell. And the seashell is a symbol for baptism. Do you guys remember, were you here when we did baptisms before? You were here? What do we do? So we put water on people's heads. We put water on people's heads. Yes, you're very right. So I have a big font that's up here, and I take a big pitcher of water and I pour it. Do you think you can hear the water when it gets poured into the... Yeah font yeah so that's one way we can hear and then do you see the water and if you were getting baptized you think you'd feel the water yeah you would definitely feel the water right so it engages all of your senses and baptism is a way that we get to feel and touch and see and hear God that God is with us that's pretty cool right so God isn't just around us and our thoughts or our prayers or in us keeping us peace God is with us where we can touch and see. And when you guys get old enough, you have what? When we have come up for the communion, you can taste the bread. Yep. And some of you have, because some of you can taste the bread and drink the wine and smell it. And I know you really want to. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to, too? Yeah. You did already? Okay. That's okay, because Jesus loves us, even if we haven't had the class yet, right? Yeah. All right. Let's pray and give thanks to God. Dear God. Thank you for making us your beloved. Thank you for teaching us and for being present in ways we can see, in ways we can smell, in ways we can touch, and ways we can see. 
Help us to share this love love. with everyone. everyone. Amen. Amen. All right. Good job. You guys can head back to your pew together. Let us pray. Eternal God, gather your spirit in this place and open our hearts to love. Guide our journey together with you at the center. Amen. Receiving difficult news is never easy. Even when we might be prepared for it. Even when we might be expecting it. Even when we have endured difficult news in the past. Because receiving difficult news is never easy. And our gospel tonight starts with some very difficult news. No, sparing no details, Jesus foretells of his horrific death. Behold, he says, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and deliver him to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and spit upon him, and scourge him, and kill him. And after these three days, he will rise. This is a lot to take in. However, this wasn't the first time the disciples heard this in the Gospel of Mark. This was actually the third time that Jesus felt the need to share this difficult news with his disciples. And I can't imagine how hard this must have been to hear even though they had heard it before, even though they were trying to prepare for what must take place. And yet, despite this difficult discourse, filled with mockery and spit and hate, there is hope. Hope that after three days, Jesus will rise. And this hope was rooted in the disciples' faith and their trust in Jesus. Because without faith and trust, hope will just become hopeless. Which is why many people continue to place faith and trust in Christ today, as we live in a world that is desperate for hope. And God knows this, which is why God sent God's only Son to give us hope in something beyond ourselves, something that we can cling to, especially when we have reached our limits. When there is nothing more that we can do to find relief, or when we are overwhelmed by guilt or shame, or when we are confronted with death, in those moments, the only thing we can do is to rely on God. We place our faith and our trust in God's promises, and we hope, beyond hope, that we will find ourselves in the company of Jesus as Jesus is our community, even when all else fails. This is where our faith begins, always in Christ. Nothing you will ever endure, not even death, will be done alone, as there is always a community in Christ, a community that each one of you are a part of, and a community that was birthed from God's very being through the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A community that at times can seem mysterious and intangible since we don't physically see Jesus walking around in the flesh. And yet Jesus has provided a way for God to be tangible with us. As Jesus said in our gospel, the cup that I drink, you will drink, and the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. Both communion and baptism are a place we encounter God in tangible ways. We can see, touch, smell, and taste the bread and the wine. We can see, touch, and hear the water when it is poured into the baptismal font. These two sacraments engage all of our senses. They are part of the human experience just like Christ experienced what it was like to be human. And while Christ was in the flesh, 
he asked us to do these things so we could remember him and know in our very bodies that God's promises are true. Promises of unconditional love, of forgiveness, of grace, mercy, peace, and everlasting life. Those promises are the good news of Jesus Christ. Promises that were lived out in the flesh so they could be felt in our flesh. We experience those promises over and over, not just because God loves us, but because Christ intimately knows all of the horrific and difficult news that permeates our world. And so God has given us the good news of Jesus to triumph over all that is hard, which may not take away your pain or your heartache completely, but this allows Christ to be present with you in those difficult spaces, filling your places of brokenness with God's grace, peace, and love. Because Jesus is your community, even when all else fails. May this good news prepare your hearts and minds as we enter a very hard week, Holy Week. May God refresh your faith. May the Spirit deepen your trust. And may the joy of Christ's resurrection fill all that is broken, providing a way forward in hope. Amen. We continue worship by singing our hymn of the day, What Wondrous Love Is This, number 666.
Let us pray. God of the universe, we give thanks that your promises are true and that you are faithful. May we find joy through giving and delight in our offering. Prepare our hearts to give freely and cheerfully. Breathe life into the seeds we sow, allowing them to grow into well-watered, fruitful trees of life. Bless us and keep us. Make your face shine upon us. Turn your face toward us and give us peace. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Because the kingdom of God has come near in Jesus Christ, we are called to respond in tangible ways. By doing acts of justice and kindness, and by sharing our resources, we bear witness to the good news of the gospel as we continue with our offering. Please stand as you are able while we sing, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful. Let us pray. Gracious God, our treasures come only from you. It is only through your goodness that we have received so much. We came into this life with nothing and we leave the same way. Guide us and inspire us to share ourselves and the resources we have. Gather us together and teach us to pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you all to share the peace however you feel comfortable.
You all did a beautiful job last Wednesday with our evening prayers. We will sing our evening prayers again tonight with our hymn, Watch, O Lord, as printed in your bulletin. Tammy, maybe if you just want to play the refrain through at the top once, and then we'll start at the refrain and go through together. Some announcements before we end. Join us on Palm Sunday. The kids will be singing in church some beautiful songs, followed by fellowship and an Easter egg hunt. Even if there is snow, it will be inside. So I hope you're able to join us for that. And then join us next week for Holy Week. Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday are both at 6.30. And Easter Sunday is 8 a.m. and 10.30 for the worship with the breakfast at 9 a.m. If you're able to help with the breakfast by bringing food or with cleanup or setup, your time and talent is appreciated, and you can sign up on the Narthex. In the Narthex, there's a sign-up sheet. And at the end of your bulletin is a Lenten devotional provided to you by ELCA World Hunger, so you are welcome to take that home with you if you would like. Are there any other announcements?
I think it's spring break, so it, it's not. Because oh. oh. next week is spring break. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. we gave them yeah, we'll give them some grace next week. <laughs> but we would love for you to come and join us if you can. <laughs> Perfect. So yes, if uh, confirmation students are able to help with the Easter breakfast, as long as you're here, you will get community service hours for that. Thank you, Lane. Any other announcements? Then please stand as you are able for the blessing. May God wrap you in love each night, providing you peace and rest. And while you sleep, may God weave strength and courage into every breath. May you meet the morning with resilient vigor, ready for come what may. And may the light of Christ fill your heart with joy every single day. May the Spirit shine on you with favor, love, and never-ending grace. And may the three-in-one bless you on this Lenten journey and in every single place. Amen. Let us sing our sending hymn, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, number 632. Go in peace, serve in love. Thanks be to God.